uh, we achieved the P7, which was great. And then uh, in race three, we have had, uh, let's say, a little issue, but uh, we couldn't find in the in the top ten or in the top five, which is a shame because we were aiming for uh, for the top five. But uh, yeah, let's see now that we are in Abu Dhabi what we can do. on it's going to be an absolutely fantastic battle for him as he continues his preparation to move forward into the FIA Formula 3 championship season but we are going down to the grid as the drivers are preparing for the race start it's going to be absolutely fantastic from the get-go and everybody will be large and in charge down on the grid so as everybody is getting themselves ready for the action, we are going to be in prime location to watch it all. It's going to be the first night race of the campaign, and we're definitely going to see under the lights here at Abu Dhabi just how well these guys and girls will go battling. And we are definitely in for a bit of a rip-roaring show. Now, there are a few titles that have already been decided coming into this penultimate race of the season, namely the Drivers' Championship. That was won earlier on today by Arthur Leclerc, who managed to get the job done with his four Fourth win of the season, uh, scoring a grand total now of 203 points. He is a whopping 65 clear of Pepe Marti. And that is enough to mean that no matter what happens in these last two races of the season tonight and tomorrow afternoon, he cannot be caught. Now, what this means, though, is that there is an epic squabble for second in the Drivers' Championship. The man who's already won the Rookie Cup, Pepe Marti of Spain, has 138 points and is second in the standings. Isaac Hajar is third place on 109, then Dino Boganovic on 106, and Jack Crawford on 101. So that is where we are currently up to. That is where the battles uh, currently reign supreme. So the battles are going to be very interesting between the drivers. They will give us plenty of excitement and entertainment in the closing stages of proceedings. So uh, we are definitely going to have some uh, exciting duels as the uh, racing continues this weekend. So... With two races to go, we are in a position to focus in on what's going to be uh, coming our way. We are going to have some fantastic battles. Well, there's a lot to talk about on the build-up to this race. It's a half an hour once again, and this, of course, is the reverse grid race. So we're going to see a very different starting procedure to what we saw previously. And for those who watched Yas Marina last time out, which was four weeks ago, we were on the starting grid of the main straight. Now we are in a completely different position. We're on the support package, uh, on the support paddock on the other side of the circuit. So the back straight now becomes the home straight. And so the first corner is that fast-flowing new hairpin uh, on the brand-new Grand Prix layout. It is absolutely phenomenal and really great to see what the competitors are going to do. Big shout-out to everybody who are watching from around the world, wherever it is you're watching. It may be a Formula Regional Asian Championship, but we have got viewers all over the world. A big shout-out to the likes of Seabird and Cali, who are listening all the way from the United States of America and watching along as well. Hello to everybody who has tuned in, from uh, Marco Antonio Biamonte to Mark Tucker to Matthias Wilkins. Everybody, you are all very welcome for these final couple of races of the season. But we are definitely going to have a fantastic finale here today and here tomorrow as well. We will have some sensational battles and the competitors are going to be working very hard indeed as they battle for supremacy. But we will definitely have some great duels out there on the circuit and it's uh, going to give us plenty to talk about as the racing continues. But we will have some sensational battles for sure. And the racers are going to give us lots of overtaking, hopefully, in the second race. We didn't have an awful lot in race one. I think they were trying to uh, look after the cars ahead of the reverse grid race. What this does mean, though, is it puts the man who finished P10 in the original race, Pierre-Louis Chauvet, back in pole position. The man who won the most races in last year's Formula Regional Asian Championship campaign. 
He now goes to the front of the grid for this one. The Flying Dutchman, Delano Van Toff, still seeking that first race win of the season. He'll line up on the front row of the grid alongside. Third position on the starting grid is going to be Gabriele Mini, who took a win here in the first round of the championship four weeks ago. So he does know how to get the job done. Fourth position on the grid will be Isaac. Uh, sorry, my no, apologies. It will not be Isaac Ajar. He finished fourth last time. It'll be Patrick Pasma, who lines up fourth on the starting grid on the second row. So he'll give us plenty of entertainment I'm sure as well then fifth position on the starting grid will be the British sensation Oliver Behrman who is still in his second race weekend of the Formula Regional Asian Championship campaign he will be the lead guard for the Mumbai Falcons going into this race sixth position on the starting grid well that goes the way of Paul Aron the Estonian who turned 18 last week and he is going to be there the Estonian for the Abu Dhabi racing by Prima Team. Sixth position on the starting grid. Seventh place, well, that will be Isaac Ajar, the Frenchman who got his first win of the season last week on the Dubai Autodrome. This is a very different circuit, though, the Yas Marina circuit. So what is he going to be able to do from P7 on the grid? P8 on the grid will be the man who finished third in race one. That is Jack Crawford of the United States of America in the Red Bull Junior colors. Uh, although, of course, he is racing in the Abu Dhabi racing by Prima Awning. So it'll be very exciting. And we'll see what he can do. The fifth row of the starting grid is going to be an all Mumbai Falcons affair as they will run ninth and tenth on the grid. Dino Beganovic, the super Swede or dynamite Dino, whichever you want to call him, who has his uh, driver, coach and mentor, the former British touring car champion, Ricard Rydell, here with him this weekend. And in tenth position on the starting grid, it is the race one winner and the newly crowned regional Asia champion, Arthur Leclerc. Behind, there are plenty of great talents. And there are still some battles in this championship to fight for. Watch out for Pepe Marti, who'll be trying to storm his way through from 12th position on the starting grid after dropping the clutch at the start of race one and falling way down to the back of the field. But fair play to the 16-year-old. He managed to fight his way back into incredible positions with some great overtakes and moved his way up to 12th position. The championship is gone, but he's already the rookie champion. He would dearly love to bow out of this Formula Regional Asian Championship campaign 2022 as the runner-up in the standings. Standings. Isaac Ajar is third at the moment. Dino Beganovic is fourth and Jack Crawford is fifth. But they are all covered by eight points and they are 29 collectively behind Pepe Marti. So in these two races, if Pepe Marti fails to score and the other three do, then there's a great chance we're going to have a four-way tussle for second place in the Drivers' Championship in tomorrow's finale. Now, after the performance we had in race one, it's been confirmed that the team's championship has also been declared. The Mumbai Falcons India Racing Team is now the team's champions of 2022 in only their second year in the category, which is a very impressive performance indeed from them. There's still going to be an interesting battle for second between High Tech Grand Prix, Pinnacle Motorsport and Abu Dhabi Racing by Prima, who all scored reasonably well in race one. And they'll want to continue that duel into the second encounter. And of course, there's the Masters class, which is still being debated although it is likely to be declared in this next race. Khaled al Kubaisi had a 35-point advantage coming into uh, this final races of the season ahead of Thomas Luedi, but he took the victory in race one ahead of the talented Swiss ace with Sally Luch in third position. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, Thomas Luedi was in second, uh, third position even. I will get there. Sally Luch was the man who crossed the line in second place. Thomas Luedi in third and that means that the gap between them has risen to 45 points. Now, all Khaled al has to do is motor around in circles for the 30 minutes, and he will claim the Masters Cup title. And it is very well deserved, having been a multiple race winner over the course of the season. He has won a grand total of eight of the races so far from 13 starts. So it is very deserving indeed for Khaled al uh, Two races won by Thomas Duedi and three won by Sally Luch. And that just shows you how even and competitive it has been, not just in the overall Drivers' Championship, but also in the Masters' Cup. There are still a few surprises to be had in the uh, Rookie Cup. Pepe Marti has sealed first position. But there are a handful of drivers who are wanting to get up to second in the Rookie Cup. Delano Van Toff and Laventa Revej are the two most likely to get there. Delano Van Toff has 131 points in the Rookie Cup. And Laventa Revej, the Hungarian talent for Evans GP Academy, has 111 and is 20 points back from Delano Van Toff. But if he scores well in these two races remaining, then he will topple Sebastian Montoya from his second place. And it is likely we may well see Delano Van Toff do the same. But we're definitely going to see some excitement and drama in these two races. 
The titles may be won, but everybody wants to bow out on a high note here at the Yas Marina circuit. It's all going to come down to who has got the stones to make it work. We will have some fantastic racing in front of us. So the battles are set to be joined once again in the penultimate race of the 2022 Formula Regional Asian Championship. It is going to be a thrill fest under the lights here on the Yas Marina circuit. Jake Sanson with you for a brilliant half an hour of race action to come. And it is definitely going to be close. There's no two ways about it. Can Pierre-Louis Chauvet outdrag Delana Van Toff to the first corner? We will find out as the racers are about to go around on their formation lap. When they do, they will obviously be heating the tyres and brakes to the optimum temperatures to get them ready for the start in the hope that they can get a good launch off the line. Pepe Marti didn't quite manage to do that in race one, and that cost him the championship. However... There is still plenty to play for. Drivers want to bow out this weekend on a high. Let's go around for our formation lap. And it will all be about what the drivers can do as they race for supremacy. Let's talk you through the grid in fine detail as we prepare for great race action. It is pole position for Pierre-Louis Chauvet. Second on the grid for Delano Van Toff. Third is Gabriele Mini from Patrick Pasma, the flying fin who won last week in Dubai. Then it is fifth position on the grid for Oliver Behrman in front of his great colleague and battler on the grid, Paul Aron. Then we will see Isaac Ajar and Jack Crawford, the two Red Bull junior talents who will be together on the fourth row of the starting grid. Then the two Mumbai Falcons who are 1-2 in race one, Dina Boganovic and the new champion, Arthur Leclerc. Next up is Francesco Brasci. He will line up alongside Pepe Marti on the grid. Then in 13th, it is Sammy Megatunif, who did a great job on his debut earlier. Michael Beloff alongside him. Lena Bueller, the talented Swiss lady, 15th position on the starting grid. Alongside her will be Lorenzo Flusha. In 17th place, it is Oliver Goethe alongside another talented female, Hamda al Kubaisi of the United Arab Emirates. Next up, it is Ayato Iwasaki, who lines up beside Leventa Revej of Hungary. Next up, it is Vladislav Lonko, who made his debut in the category earlier on today. David Morales, the American, will be 22nd. Owen Tanjavelu will line up alongside the Masters leader, Khaled al -Kubaisi. Then it is Sally Aluch, who will be 25th on the starting grid alongside his rival, Thomas Duwady, in 26th. Then will come the drivers who failed to make the flag in race one. 27th on the grid will be Ido Cohen, as the Israeli will line up on the grid alongside Nicola Maranangeli, with the last place on the grid taken up by the Emirati lady, Amna al -Kubaisi. So, looking very strong as the battles are going to be well and truly joined. The competitors will be working very hard from the get-go. And so they will obviously be weaving from side to side, trying to get some heat and temperature into the tyres. But we will have some wonderful battlers and the competitors will be giving us uh, a lot of great drama. So let's see what happens as the competitors uh, will give us plenty to do and plenty to talk about. So hopefully it is going to be another sensational battle and a great scrap for the drivers as they run in formation around the course. So they come to their position. They will come out of the chicane on the back straight, which of course is now the home straight for uh, this race. And it's definitely going to be a tight one. But who's going to get the victory? Lots of unanswered questions here as we battle for position. But a lot of support for a lot of drivers so we'll have to see how things continue to play out. But it's definitely going to be an exciting battle for our drivers as they race in formation. So let's see what they can produce. Competitors now pulling into their positions on the starting grid. It'll be Pierre-Louis Chauvet who lines up on the front of the grid. And then, of course, alongside him will be Delano Van Toff seeking his first win in the category. Plenty to talk about and plenty to discuss. But over the next 30 minutes, our 29 drivers, our boys and girls of the Formula Regional Asian Championship 2022, will have their one and only night race over the course of the season. And this is one they all want to win. Under the floodlights in Yas Marina is very special. And in these cars, it's even more than most. Green flag at the back of the grid. Lights will come on. When we go out, we'll be racing at Yas Marina. Wait for it. We will go to battle. Let's race at Yas Marina. 
Great start from the front of the field for Pierre Louis Chauvet. Vantov is going to have to try and hold off Gabrielli Mini, who makes a good start on the far side, but he's going to have Patrick Pasma to the inside line. Pasma is going to move into third place without any doubt at all. Paul Laurent nearly locks up and goes into the back of the fin as round the outside Oliver Behrman holds a good stationary line. And oh, up in the air goes Gabrielli Mini, and he's gone straight off the road. He manages to get back on again alongside Delano Vantov, and he's bidding for second place. So Mini is through in a second, and Vantov goes off the road, manages to get going going again in front of a high tech but round the outside he's going to have pressure from Oliver Behrman who's going to hook him onto the curb on the inside under the W Hotel and they are going to battle for a rip roaring scrap as they come out of the last section of the Grand Prix circuit and onto the home straight it is Pierre-Louis Chauvet who leads the way Mini in second place Vantoff appears to be struggling as through comes one of the Red Bull drivers I think that is Jack Crawford Vantoff is trying to get back past Paul Aron it's not, it's, as, it's actually Isaac Hajar who comes round the outside of Antov up on the curbs and gets the move. So nicely done from the Franco-Algerian. A few drivers still trying to pick their line as they come through. But as they go down the hill once again, it's all looking pretty gravy for Pierre-Louis Chauvet as he runs in good position now. Battling away with the high-tech GP car. Oh, a nice move there from Hajar as he gets on the inside of Paul Aron. And as they come through the hairpin, it is definitely going to be pretty spicy as they go down the back straight. Some great racing so far as they continue in formation. Everybody looks to be in a Formula Regional Asia-shaped car. Nobody's picked up any damage to my knowledge as Paul Aron locks up big time. Isaac Ajar's going to go right round the outside and they bash wheels as they come into the apex. And who's going to be there for the taking? That looks like one of the Abu Dhabi by Prima cars trying to jump both of them. No, that is in fact one of the pinnacles, I do believe. Either that or it's the Black Arts. So Delano Vantoff is trying to sweep by as they go into lap two. It's five abreast as they go for the corner. And they're going to be three wide through the turn. That just shows you how good this new corner is. You can run three wide. My goodness, Paul Aron has stormed past them all. Excellent run from the Estonian. And they are still squabbling as they head for the W Hotel. So that is the twin Mumbai Falcon cars running in there with Jack Crawford. Crawford's trying to hold it round the outside, but Beganovic and Leclerc are getting stuck in, and that's one of the Black Arts cars running wide. I think that is Thomas Nuedi. Either that or it is Ayato Iwasaki, his teammate. So, still battling. Big lockup from Paul Aron as he comes on to the home straight. But out in front, it is Pierre Louis Chauvet in front of Gabrielli Mini and the Mumbai Falcons car of Oliver Behrman in third position. The race start is under investigation, I'm told. Not entirely sure who it is, but fastest in the first sector on this lap at the moment is the young man from Chelmsford, Oliver Behrman, part of the Ferrari Driver Academy. And he is going to be racing in FIA Formula 3 when this season is done. But he wants to bow out of the championship here in Formula Regional Asia on a high note and wants to go for the victory if he possibly can. Down into the braking zone for the hairpin as they run together. It's a very exciting run out of the hairpin. Oh, a couple of drivers running a little bit deep as they come off the hairpin. And now down the back straight once again. Chauvet, Mini, Behrman, Hajar, Aron. Then it is Pasma who is in front of Delano Vantov. But Vantov's going to make a big move up the inside into the hairpin. And it looks as though Dina Boganovic might be trying to make his bid to get past one of the Abu Dhabi racing by Prima cars. I think that is, yes, it is the Red Bull Junior Colors car of Jack Crawford. Somebody just overshooting completely. I think it's Oliver Goethe in the three wide by race GP car with the golf colors. So Oliver Goethe goes off the road and manages to recover. Lap three, 26 minutes to go, and it's getting quite close indeed as Dina Boganovic is going to try and run right round the outside of Jack Crawford. Can he hold it around the outside? He's got good grip. He's going to try the Sebastian Montoya move. He's up on the curves. He goes airborne, but he's still alongside Jack Crawford. No holds barred between these two, and the Super Swede is going to try, but Crawford goes deep, goes off. And now Beganovic will run right round the outside. So Dina Beganovic holds his nerve and he's there. Excellent from the Swede. That was absolute no holds barred racing between the two drivers. Neither prepared to give an inch. And that was lovely from Dino Beganovic. So he gets up into the position. Chauvet is leading. But he's being caught by Gabriele Mini. The last time Gabriele Mini raced here four weeks ago, he was a race winner. So he'll definitely want to go for the battle again. He's got a great chance. So let's see if he is going to close up on Pierre-Louis Chauvet into the hairpin. 
this is going to be a very tight run. And still the drivers battle for supremacy as they come down the back straight once again. Lots of jockeying for position, lots of great racecraft. And there's all sorts of battles to come. Down the back straight again, just waiting to see who's going to pick up the slipstream. Gabrielli Mini starting to have a think about Pierre-Louis Chauvet. Chauvet is on the lock stops, so that's obviously going to give Gabrielli Mini a great chance to have a think about him into turn one. They come down the support paddock straight, which is now the main straight. They're coming up towards turn one, which is nowadays affectionately known as Marsa. So Gabrielli Mini making his run up towards the first hairpin. He's not quite close enough yet. But as the rest of the field are tightening up, it's going to get very interesting from here on out. Now, Khaled El Kubaisi has actually fallen to the back of the field. The leader of the Masters Cup race is Sally Alouch. But as long as Khaled El Kubaisi keeps going, he is going to lift the Masters Cup title, despite running at the tail of the field at the moment. So we'll update you on that as we go. But certainly for the moment, this race is up for grabs and Gabrielli Mini wants it. Oliver Behrman just needs to keep his wits about him in third position because he might just get a whiff of... Oh, that is one of the Red Bull cars slowing. So that is going to be Jack Crawford. Jack Crawford is in trouble. Jack Crawford in big trouble. I'm not quite sure what it is, but certainly Crawford has now fallen down through the field. What a shame for the American. But Jack Crawford is down and out of it. I can still see Isaac Ajar in fourth place. He's the man who's just set the fastest lap of the race, by the way. A 151-0 from him. And let's not forget that prior to this weekend, he held the lap record. So he's going even faster in the cooler conditions of the nighttime. So in this race, whoever gets the fastest lap is going to be the recipient of the new lap record in Formula Regional Asia around here. So Pierre-Louis Chauvet leads the race. Mini in second, Behrman is third. From Hajar, Aron, Pazma, Vantoff, Beganovic, and now Arthur Leclerc because Jack Crawford has dropped down the order. A very unfortunate case of affairs for Jack Crawford. A safety car, safety car. Now I wonder if his car is parked in a dangerous position. But it is safety car conditions, I'm afraid. Pierre-Louis Chauvet in front of Gabriele Mini and Oliver Behrman. And that's going to tighten the field right up. Well, this is going to get interesting. Isaac Ajar will remain in fourth position under the safety car conditions. And there is Jack Crawford's car. That is devastating for the American. It's been a topsy-turvy season, really, for the young Red Bull superstar. And this has not coloured it any better. He extricates himself from the car and he will run to the marshal post but unfortunately his car is in a dangerous position so the safety car was the only option and poor Jack Crawford that is not what he needed to finish up his season that pretty much counts him out of the charge for second in the driver's standings safety car conditions and with 22 minutes to remain as well well very unfortunate indeed I think I caught a whiff of the uh, Yaz Kart Zone drivers having their own private battle. I have a feeling that Jack Crawford might just have enough time to get himself on the grid with the amount of time he's got to walk back. But the safety car team are doing their best as they run through and hold up the field. Poor Jack Crawford. He really has absolutely no luck around uh, this place. He had a very difficult situation now uh, for the first part of the season. But the... Uh, Marshals are going to work. The Orange Army are going to help move that car. Well done to the Marshals. They've been hard at it all the way through the weekend. They never get the credit they duly deserve. But uh, well done to them. We cannot race without them. We are very much indebted. So let us have a look at the way the standings play out at the moment under safety car conditions as the Marshals move the Abu Dhabi Racing by Prima car of Jack Crawford. Under safety car conditions, we have Pierre-Louis Chauvet in the lead, Gabrielli Mini in second place, Oliver Behrman in third from Isaac Ajar and Paul Aron, Patrick Pazma and Delano Van Toff. Then it is Dino Beganovic in front of his teammate Arthur Leclerc, who was crowned champion in race one. Pepe Marti is up to 10th place, so he has a chance to battle with his championship rival when we go green again. 11th is Francesco Brasci, then Michael Bello from Sami Megatunif, the new boy, who was a star in karting back in his days and has made the step up to Formula Regional Asia just for the season finale. Uh, he is in front of Lorenzo Flusha, Oliver Goethe, Lena Bula, David Morales and Hamda al -Kubaisi. From Vladislav Lomko, Ido Cohen, Leventa Ravej, Nicola Marinangeli, Owen Tanjavelu, Ayatu Iwasaki, Sally Aluch, Amna Al Kubaisi, Thomas Luedi, and Khaled Al Kubaisi. So they're going to run together in formation. This is where we tend to see a few feisty drives through the field. 
Watch for Isaac Ajar. He'll want to come up from fourth position. Pierre-Louis Chauvet's got a hard job to hang on in front of the rest of the field. The safety car lights are out. The safety car lights are out. So we are going to go racing at the end of this lap. It's just a one-lap deal then for the safety car. And that means Pierre-Louis Chauvet is going to need to back up the field. Well, this could be a perfect restart for Pierre-Louis Chauvet. As he comes out of the chicane, the safety car is right there. So Pierre-Louis Chauvet is going to have to back up a little bit more because the safety car is peeling in. He's going to make this a very late restart. This is going to get very spicy to turn one. Pierre-Louis Chauvet leaving it as late as humanly possible. Now he drops the hammer and oh my goodness, what a restart this is going to be. Down to turn one, up towards Marsa and they couldn't be more bunched as they go towards the first apex. Mini is already having a think about it. He goes wide and it's three wide behind them as Behrman shakes off Aran and Hajar. Hajar's going to go very wide. Pasma's going to pick up the pieces and as they come through, Mini's gone off the road as has Oliver Behrman. They managed to get back in but Mini's going for the lead on Pierre-Louis Chauvet. Behrman trying to get back alongside Paul Aron and they've tangled. Aron and Behrman come together. Aron and Behrman are out of it. Oh, they just got too close together. We saw a similar incident back in the first week when we had Jim Bolokbasi, Pepe Marti and uh, one other driver all getting to the same place. It was Hadrian David. They all took each other off the road and I'm afraid for Paul Aron and Oliver Behrman, they just got a little bit too close together. We almost had that between Mini and Chauvet, but Mini has taken the lead now. So the Italian Gabriele Mini is in the lead. Are we safety car again? because a couple of drivers are actually weaving from side to side, still trying to get heated to the tyres by the look of it. Side by side between two of the Evans GP cars by the look of it. That is obviously going to be Michael Belov and Sami Megatunif who are renewing their battle from race one. And yes, safety car again. Yep, safety car for that incident between Paul Aron and Oliver Behrman. Oh dear, that is a very bent motor car, I'm afraid. So Paul Aron. He just ended up getting a little bit too close to Oliver Behrman, or Oliver Behrman got a little bit too close to Paul Aron, whichever interpretation you're willing to believe. But Oliver Behrman kisses goodbye a victory. He had a great chance of it as well. But then again, so did Paul Aron. But they'll be back for race three tomorrow. Sadly, though, it's going to be a very uphill struggle for them. There's the safety car ready to pick them up again, and I have a feeling this one is going to be slightly longer. That will probably take about two laps minimum to clear. But Pierre-Louis Chauvet really did bunch them up big time, and I think that was one of the reasons that that chain reaction occurred. We had two drivers running wide, Mini and Behrman. They were both going for the same bit of racetrack. And unfortunately for Behrman and Aron, it's game over for the Brit and the Estonian. So uh, they're in position. You can see the skid marks as the cars are obviously trying desperately not to have a big accident with the wall and unfortunately neither car managed to avoid it so they are very much out of the race and under safety car conditions we are so the two cars are in a very different position on the racetrack although they are on the same corner the orange army go to work once again they're all, well no overtime here this evening but well done to all the brave and courageous men and women around the circuit here at Yas Marina. They do an amazing job. They keep us safe and sound, and without them, we could not race at all. So big up to the Orange Army and all the officials and stewards, of course, as well, because uh, without officialdom, we don't have an organized motor race either. So a big uh, shout out to them. But Gabriele Mini out in first position. And while we're giving uh, shout outs to stewards, a massive uh, uh, congratulations to the race director in the Formula Regional Asian Championship, Eduardo Freitas, who was confirmed earlier this week as being one of the two men that is going to pick up the Formula One race director job. So uh, from Formula Regional Asia to uh, Formula One, he's the second man to do that in as many years, because last year, Guan Yu Zhou did exactly the same thing. Guan Yu Zhou went from Formula Regional Asian Champion last year, of course, to uh, the Formula One paddock this year with the Alfa Romeo team. And now Eduardo Freitas will take over the reins of the race director role in partnership. Is that a slow moving Abu Dhabi racing by Prema or was it just trying not to uh, bunch up with the car in front? I think it was the latter. Just trying to make sure that we don't get too many breakdowns on the safety car. It wouldn't be the first time it happened this year either because we had Isaac Ajar in Dubai a couple of weeks ago running in third place and the engine misfired and then eventually died on him. So uh, a big problem for him. Now, this is interesting. I wondered if this was going to come up. 
Gabrielli Mini, car number four, must give the position back to car 26. That is Pierre-Louis Chauvet. Now, that's because, I'm assuming, they have deemed that he made the overtaking move while off the racetrack, as he did run wide at turn one, and then it managed to stick the car on the inside through the next two adjacent apexes and take the lead of the race. So uh, the team will be telling Gabrielli Mini, you need to move over, mate, and you need to give Pierre-Louis Chauvet the position back again. So this is going to be a little bit awkward for the Italian. In fact, he's already done it. So he doesn't need to uh, spend too long making that decision. He's already moved over. Now, Patrick Pasma is running in third place. There is the extraction vehicle, just uh, removing Paul Ron's car. I'm very sure Oliver Behrman's car is already off the road. So we're only going to need one more lap, I think, behind the safety car. They've been working very hard over the course of the weekend, these uh, boys and girls not just on the Formula Regional Asian Championship, but also Asian Le Mans and the F4 UAE Championship, which has been uh, racing over the course of the weekend. So now we'll get to see this incredible duel. Now, this is going to be interesting because, again, Pierre-Louis Chauvet is going to be leading them around. And I think he actually got caught out by the safety car only being out for one lap because he backed the field up very late. So we'll have to see if it is going to be an interesting situation for the competitors on the restart. But certainly we are going to have an exceptional battle on the reboot. This Marsa corner, this uh, new layout hairpin really is spectacular. It has spiced up the racing no end. And we're seeing a lot of wheel-to-wheel -wheel duels, unfortunately one of which has just ended in a safety car between Paul Laurent and Oliver Behrman. And the two drivers in question, their races have rather sadly come to a conclusion. 13 minutes remain. We are under safety car conditions. If you've just joined us, you haven't missed a massive amount, but there is going to be a rip-roaring battle on the race's return. As Pierre-Louis Chauvet, Gabrielli Mini, and Patrick Pasma will be the leading cars on the restart. From Isaac Hajar, Delano Vantoff, Arthur Leclerc, the new champion in front of Dino Boganovic. So he managed to pick up the places on that uh, uh, first restarted lap. Pepe Marti is in eighth place behind the two Mumbai Falcons. Then Michael Beloff and Sami Megatunif. Francesco Brasci is in 11th place. Then Lorenzo Fluscher and Oliver Goethe. It's been a very good week for the Fluscher family, as uh, Lorenzo has obviously been uh, fighting for top 10 positions once again, but his uh, two younger siblings have had a very good time of it. Lucas Fluscher has just picked up a win in the WSK Supermaster Series, and uh, their sister Luna has just been confirmed as a Mercedes AMG F1 junior driver. And she actually attended the uh, new Mercedes F1 cars launch yesterday. So it's been a busy week for the Fluscher family in motorsport. And Lorenzo would certainly like to pick up a points finish. He's not far away from it at the moment in 12th place behind Sami Megatunif and Francesco Brasci. So he's got a chance of that, but then so too have Oliver Goethe and Leda Bula. And fair play to uh, some of the competitors in the field. But uh, Lena Bueller, who's only in her second weekend of the Formula Regional Asian Championship, she has taken to this car like a duck to water. And she's only four places away from the points herself. And she's gaining in confidence and stature all the way through the season. What there is left of it, of course. But she's definitely a force to be reckoned with. If she's going to be racing in Formula Regional Europe later this year, I would keep an eye on Lena Bueller. She certainly seems to have got the knack of this car. The safety car lights are out. Now, it's very late again. It's very late again. Now, that means that Bielowicz Chauvet has not got long to back up the field. And he's going for it once more. This is going to be interesting. This is almost going to be like an IndyCar restart, the way they're coming off the course together. Safety car peels in. Now Pierre louis Chauvet drops the hammer. Does he? Oh, he thinks about it. And there's a little bit of a rub on the wing there from Isaac Ajar. Has he picked up damage? Down to the first corner they go. And it's going to be four wide for third position. Fifth position. Pasma's going to go for both of them. Pasma will go for the lead, and he's taken it. They run wide, Pasma and Chauvet. Mini's going to take the lead, and that is Arthur Leclerc in second, is it? Or is it Dino Boganovic? My goodness. Absolutely sensational stuff as Dino Boganovic runs in second position. He was the one who made the moves. So now through the double left-hand apex of the W Hotel is that Vantoff trying to get himself up on the inside of Arthur Leclerc. My word, that was hectic. And now they are finally starting to set themselves out into some semblance of rhythm. Hajar's going wide. He's got damage to the front wing. That's it. It's over for Hajar. Surely he's not going to be able to hold that together. So Hajar's plummeting down the field, just like his fellow Red Bull Junior earlier in the race. And so third position is now Arthur Leclerc. 
My goodness, how does he do it? He just finds himself in the best part of the racetrack in the perfect moment. Talk about dropping five quid and picking up 20. He's having an absolute stormer, is Arthur Leclerc. And a few drivers running wide as they go down the hill. You've got to be careful when you rejoin. We had a big incident in the F4 UAE Championship race yesterday, and it, we almost had one again there. Side by side, several times over. Cars getting squirrely on the throttle as they come off the hairpin once again and down the back straight. So now we're going to get to see, is this going to be Lorenzo Fluscia making his move on the inside of Sami Megatuni, if I think that is, or it might be even his teammate, Francesco Brasci. Meanwhile, Mini is being hunted down by Dynamite Dino. Side by side, the Everts GP cars into the braking zone, and Isaac Ajar overshoots the chicane. I have a feeling he's going to pull this in. Yep, straight into the pits. Isaac Ajar is out. What a shame. Both Red Bull youngsters do not make the flag in race two. So it's going to be absolute barnstormer stuff in the final nine minutes of this race. And we've got more wheel-to-wheel -wheel drama. The reverse grid race really does provide spice. Oh, a bit of a run wide there from one of the Abu Dhabi by Prima cars is drifting right off the road. Couldn't quite make out who that was, but the rejoin was right in the path of Owen Tanjavelu, who just about managed to steer clear. There are lockups galore, and that's one of the Evans GP cars going out wide. I think that is Michael Belov. It's either him or his teammate, Sammy, Mega, uh, Sammy Megatunif, and in the middle of them, well, there is the 77. That's David Morales getting a little bit out of sorts. Oh, and a spin, a spin on the Nicholas Latifi corner, an almost carbon copy of the same incident, and that is Thomas Nuedi. Now, that, he manages to recover, but that has just gifted the Masters Cup title to Khaled al -Kubaisi. So he will be confirmed as champion as long as he brings it home in one piece now. And that is great news for the local favourites here and for the local fans here in the United Arab Emirates. The three-time winner of the Dubai 24 Hours, Khaled al Kubaisi, is about to win the Masters Cup in the Formula Regional Asian Championship, his first full-season campaign in the category. Gabriele Mini trying to shake off the toe of Dino Boganovic. He knows how big a threat Dino is going to be in this one. And after Leclerc is right there in third position, how do these guys do it? It's absolutely phenomenal. Bit of a lock-up for Gabriele Mini, but he corrects it before the car comes to a total stop. This is going to be very intriguing at the end of this one. Still, they race for supremacy, and the battles are going to be absolutely extreme. Now, fourth position is Delano Van Toff, and in fifth place, welcome back to the big show, buddy. It's Pepe Marti, the 16-year-old from Spain. Then it's Belov, Megatunif, Brashi, Chauvet, and Oliver Gerther has worked his way into the points now. And side by side towards us, that is going to be Fluda and Cohen, I do believe. Uh, that is the 17. I apologize. So that is Lena Bueller, who is having a great battle with the two Evans GP cars, and she's made it through the three Evans GP cars. Goodness me, they're at each other's throats. That's Morales, Marinangeli, and Revege, and someone's going to have to concede. That isn't quite what we had in mind, David. You've got to get on the brakes a little bit cleaner than that. Otherwise, his teammates are going to be all over him. So Morales, Marin Angeli, and Levetta Revesh. Up the inside, that's going to be a perfect textbook maneuver from Nicola Marin Angeli. But his teammate is not going to let it happen. That'll do on the inside. Parks it on the apex. Superb. That'll do from Nicola Marin Angeli. And he gets through. David Morales has got to be very careful that his teammate, Leventa Revej, doesn't do the same thing, which is exactly what he's going to attempt. He had to bail out of it mid-apex there. He realized that Morales was going to cut across. And now Ayato Iwasaki is getting onto the toe as well. So Iwasaki wants a piece of this. That's what you have to take your hat off to with the Formula Regulation Championship. There are battles everywhere you look. And still, David Morales is trying to get his teammate to park it and just move aside. So around the outside comes Iwasaki. Whoops, not a lot of road to play with there. So Ayato Iwasaki has to fall in behind the Evans GP trio once again. Sounds like a 1950s rock combo. Side by side, Oliver Goethe running wheel to wheel there with Lorenzo Fluscher. Fluscher around the outside, the back end kicks out, but he's got the move. But on the exit, Goethe's going to have a slightly faster acceleration point. So they're going to go wheel to wheel as they come down the straight once more. Hold your breath, gentlemen. Give each other space. 
Gertha's is going to go the high side, right round the outside. Flusha is going to keep the car nice and parked on the apex. He's going to go long. Gertha will switch lines. Flusha will cut out wide, but cut straight back across. Well reacted by the Spaniard. That'll do. So now we've got a bit of a threat from behind as well. That's Ido Cohen in Black Arts Racing Car, the Israeli who was supposed to start the season. But unfortunately, he fell ill before the first weekend, so he was not able to take part in the first round at Yas Marina. But he's making good use of the opportunity while it's still here. And the race is still absolutely electric as the field comes through. This is onto the main straight, although they're not actually racing to the line here because they're on the support paddock this weekend. So up to what used to be turned one in this championship. Four weeks ago it was turned one. Now it's definitely not. Gabrielli Mini still trying to push away from Dina Boganovic. Fastest of all in the first sector, though, is Pepe Marti, who's trying to close up on his Dutch teammate, Delano Van Toff. So through the hairpin and onto the run to the chicane once again. And this is where the slipstream's really going to count. Now, track uh, limits for the second time, a warning for the 88 of Hamda Adkibaisi. Bit of a lock-up into the hairpin. And still these battles in the midfield just keep on getting better and better. As down to the braking zone, that's going to be a late lunge for one of the three wide race cars. That is Francesco Brasci, who gets on the inside of Sami Megatunif. Megatunif's going to try and get the switcheroo, and he's going to make it round the far side. That was well read by Megatunif. Unfortunately, Brasci is now going to have to defend big time to cover Pierre-Louis Chauvet as Chauvet has fallen all the way down to the bottom end of the top 10. But Brashi's going to try and hold station. Chauvet backs out initially, waits for Brashi to run deep, but he doesn't go as wide as he was hoping he would. So Brashi corrects it nice and neatly. You've got to love this new layout of the circuit. It really has made everything so much better. That's an absolutely impossible move from Brashi. I think he just missed his breaking point and realized, well, I've got to commit to the overtake, otherwise I'm going to hit him. And he ended up just about hitting him anyway. He manages to get going, but uh, that move was never on for Francesco Brasci. He was fortunate there. Now, for the record, Isaac Ajar has actually got out onto the circuit again, and Patrick Pasma has come into the pits. So what's happened to Pasma? I didn't see anything for him, but he was running in fourth place at one point. So Patrick Pasma has peeled off into the pits and retired. He's joined Behrman, Aron, and Crawford on the sidelines. Uh, Isaac Ajar is still racing. He's just set the fastest lap of the race at 1 minute 50.7. I, I, I guess that softens the blow a little bit. But he's definitely out of contention. Meanwhile, Pepe Marti, I didn't see where he did it, but he's got past Ilana Vantov. So Marti has come up to fourth position. Gabrielli Mini trying to break the toe. Dino Boganovic. All that tutelage from Ricard Rydell and his colleagues, of course, at Mumbai Falcons, just giving him a little bit of extra support to try and make that move. It wasn't that long ago that Mini and Boganovic were fighting each other in the World Karting Championship, and here they are in the Formula Regional Asian Championship all over again. A little bit of a twitch from Chauvet as he runs in behind Sami Megatunif once more. So through they come again. And Sami Megatunif is having a great debut, I have to say. Excellent work from him. It's a little bit too little, too late, if you like, but he's done a very good job regardless. So Francesco Brasci's spin has uh, promoted Chauvet to eighth. Flusha is now in ninth place and in the points after a great fight back again. And uh, Oliver Goethe is in tenth position. Ido Cohen is eleventh from Lena Bueller and Nicola Marinangeli. Brilliant drive from Lena Bueller. And she is running in twelfth position at the moment, just behind Ido Cohen. So she's not too far away from scoring her first point, and she would be the first woman in the championship season to score points if she could do so. But we are in the final minute, and I think we're going to run out of time before any more racing laps occur. But that doesn't mean that Dina Boganovic isn't going to go for the win. There's enough time, there's enough opportunity. As they drop down the hill, he can run in the slipstream, but he will catch a little whiff of dirty air if he's not careful. So Gabrielli Mini still trying to hold on in front of Dino Boganovic. Arthur Leclerc just looking to pick up another podium in third. 
Beganovic has got to commit on the brakes here. They've got 25 seconds to race to the line. I'm not sure we're going to get another lap in, but we just might. Beganovic is doing everything he can. He's following Gabrielli Mini's foot tracks. And again, Mini trying to break the toe big time, swarming from one side of the road to the other as he desperately tries to break the slipstream. Can the Swede charge up the inside line? Is he going to be able to get the car stopped if he does? He goes the long way round. Mini tries to squeeze him at the gap. Time ticks down to zero. This is going to be a run to the flag as Beganovic is going to try and get a good run. He's had to hesitate, and Gabrielli Mini surely is going to get there in front of Beganovic across the line. And it is the checkered flag for Gabrielli Mini by a tenth of a second in front of Dino Beganovic. What a brilliant race between the two. If only we had one more lap, because that would have been even better. But Gabrielli Mini very deserving of the win. He held off the pressure from Dina Beganovic and Arthur Leclerc. Pepe Marti in fourth position from Delano Vantov and Michael Belov. Absolutely fantastic racing. Reverse grid, night race at Yas Marina, 29 drivers, banging, absolutely banging. That is exactly what motorsport is supposed to be about. And the boys and girls out there did the sport proud. Grandstand stuff, terrific entertainment. And Gabrielli Mini, for the second time this year, takes a victory. Aren't you glad you came back now, boy? <laughs> he wasn't going to finish the season, Gabrielli Mini, and then they just got a little bit tempted. Well, you never know. We might get something. You certainly did, mate. You got the win. And two more podiums for Mumbai Falcons in their title-winning weekend. Second and third for Dino Vaganovic and Arthur Leclerc. Pepe Marti. Oh, I've got to take my hat off to him. Fourth position. What a fight back from 12th on the grid. I tell you what, this Spaniard is worth keeping an eye on. 16 years of age in his first Formula Regional Asian Championship campaign. Dominated the Rookie Cup. Second in the Drivers' Championship. And he just clawed his way back from 12th to 4th. If that's not impressive, nothing is. Terrific stuff. Well, we are going to wrap up proceedings here. It's been an absolutely incredible night. We've had a wonderful bit of racing. There is one race to go tomorrow in the Formula Regional Asian Championship, where it's all about wrapping up in style. We've had a win for Arthur Leclerc. We've had a win for Gabrielli Mini. Tune in tomorrow to find out who will win the third and final encounter.